that's that is what I like about um, you know what we're doing is it is very different than what some of the other like entrepreneur type guys are out there doing because they do have a very scripted content role. So well, because like they're reading off a teleprompter. Well, because you know they're doing a sales script, and you know that from doing sales, you in your own mind you have a script that works and that converts, and that's when they when they listen when you listen to most entrepreneurial podcasts they're going to sell you on something mm -hmm. and it isn't entrepreneurs hang out goof off it's entrepreneur tells you business stuff if there's a call to action and you need to join a mastermind course or right. you know, something else which there's nothing wrong with that right but that that changes so they want the jump cuts real quick and then there's also a difference between youtube promo videos versus podcasting so the podcasting on this will be more long and meandering and everything hanging out but the youtube videos you do want them sharper mm -hmm. three four minutes to the point this versus that right people want less filler yeah different medium yeah so you know even my joe because even joe rogan cuts his he does the big long stream but they they always cut them in the segments correct he does a three and a half hour deal exactly and then they they do slice and dice yes yeah. yeah um you know, one of these things that I think is really important for entrepreneurs, and, and I want to say that it doesn't matter what age the entrepreneur is, whether it's a 20-year-old guy or a 19-year-old guy, you know, to a 50-year-old guy, you know, uh, moving into entrepreneurship after working, you know, a corporate job. Um, you really need to think about where – where you are in your mind, and I know that you're real big on this whole mindfulness, um, this idea of being mindful or mindfulness, but um, there's something that I, I read, I believe it was, in, it was in Gorilla Mindset that said, am I choosing to become the type of person that I want to become? And where I'm going with this is right now I'm coaching a guy and he has, you know, some issues with like getting too emotional about little tiny things that are happening instead of seeing like the big picture. Hey, this is what I'm trying to do with my business or I'm, he's getting a little bit lost in, you know, hey, I'm doing some work here and I'm doing it for free. Well, what's the long tail on that work, right? Where, what does that lead to? And I think it's really important that entrepreneurs of any age look at that and you have to step back and say hey where am I going and am I willing to do the work to get there because a lot of these guys are not willing to do the work up front to get to the stage two stage three stage four to be able to do what you and I are doing right now we're sitting at the Ritz Carlton overlooking the ocean in Laguna on the coast of the west coast of California so truly we're blessed. Mm -hmm. We're sitting at a marble table. We've got a microphone. We actually have a production guy uh, behind the scenes working on this. And we've got over $3,000 worth of whiskey sitting on the table. How do you get from, you know, the new guy shifting over to just seeing that all that bling, right? But going, you have to understand that there's a lot of work to do, but the reward or the prize is really worth it. Because there's a there's a a freedom, and there's a sense of joy that comes from being able to to do the things that you and I enjoy. Yeah, there's there's a lot to it. One is because I've I'm always starting new businesses, so I'm always go even though I have a built in what like this podcast is a new business in in a way. Sure. And so I'm always on day one or day zero of launching something new. And the fundamentals, the fundamentals are the same. That's what people don't like to, to hear. The, people don't like to hear the fundamentals. I don't, I don't believe in passive income. Um, sure, there's a way to get it, but if it's passive, you can ratchet that up to active. And if you ratchet, that's why nobody, nobody like Grant Carter, none of those guys are working two hours a day, right? I think that's the biggest misconception, people who they're seduced by the entrepreneurial lifestyle and they think that you just work a couple hours, but if you only want to work a couple hours, you actually will never be a success. Correct. Because you're going to work. So, I mean, sometimes you, you know, there, there's nice that if it's, you're in town, I just drove up, 
I'm here doing this. We'll go have a cigar night. There's a freedom in that, but I worked, got up early, worked all that. Exactly. After cigar night, I'll work until probably one in the morning mm -hmm. on other stuff. And as we're here, I'm typing, working on my stuff all the time too. And that's what the guys, they don't get, but. But you love what you're doing. I, lo I love what I'm doing, but I didn't always. I mean, there's things I don't like to do. The grind, right? Right. You, I still do a lot of the grind. I still well, there's, like there's calendaring. There's accounting. Yeah. There's, there's, you know, uh, production you know, that goes into building these, these podcasts. There's a ton that happens behind the scenes with any type of production. There's a lot of production work and a lot of, of manpower that goes into that. And, um, and that's what the, the number one thing, the number one lesson I, I always try to instill, especially the younger guys, but it applies to my own ages. Every year I try to learn a new skill. And more than one skill, if I can possibly. Sure. Because skill building is compounded interest. Because every skill you have builds on every other skill. So if you know how to do edit videos, well, editing videos is a skill, but what if you can edit videos and you can tell a story? What if you can edit videos and shoot your own film? What if you can edit videos and take great pictures and tell a compelling story? What if you can edit videos, take great photos, tell a compelling story, and sell a product? Right, one, two, three, four, five, and you and you grow out your skill base, and that's why if people do intern, so much of that they just want to follow the big dogs and, and do hang out with the people, but they're not. You need to learn a skill, and you need somebody who is willing to mentor you on a skill. Okay, go on the sales call, go on the sales pitch. Okay, what are the? If I were training someone, I would say. Not to be too cliche, there was a movie, Sell Me This Pen, right? But what are the 10 biggest sales objections people have? Sure. How do you overcome them? Most, well, most people don't even know that there's a sales objection, right? right. They don't even know that. So if, they're, if they are interning or something, then they should be learning a very specific skill. They should be acutely aware of what they're learning. And then the mentorship relationship should be focused on what that person's teaching. That said, they can read books and you can learn all that on the internet. Right. Now it is. It's, it's really comes down to the old cliche of, you know, you, you do have to pay your dues and in your continue to pay those dues for many, 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 many years. Even when you are enjoying some of the fruits of your labor, mm -hmm. you know, decades later, uh, you're still you continue to grind. And so, you know, it does go back to, to, you know, doing something that you enjoy doing. You know, there's a lot of people out there, I think, in the social media world that just want fame and fortune and attention, and they don't really have a message or they don't really have a, a purpose or a why uh, to what they're doing. And uh, that's, it, it's really important to have that, have that piece of why and what am I doing. But, you know, I, I keep struggling with, with folks that, don't want to put in the work. You have to do the work up front. Um, if you are going to become a, let's just say, a, a equipment operator, and you you ultimately want to have your own fleet of bulldozers, right? You have to go out and find out who's got the best bulldozers in the world. What is the best school for me to go to? Okay, there's a school you know, a 12 week program in Houston, Texas that I can go and attend. And when I get out, I'm going to go and work for a union shop that does really high end construction because they're going to have killer, you know, bobcats or they're going to have killer, you know, caterpillar tractors or whatever it is. I love the whole trade school thing because I do believe that it's the on ramp to entrepreneurship but you have to put in your dues. You're going to have to go to the school, learn the craft, then go on the job and hone your craft. So it's more than just learning it. You have to hone it and you have to put that time in. You might be at that union shop pushing dirt around for two or three years or five years or seven years, however long it takes you to master that skill and become an expert, right? So that is essential to you know being successful and then maybe you, you grab thank you <laughs> and then maybe you grab a 
you know, a, a loan, buy a $20,000 Bobcat and branch off and do some moonlighting work, right? And then eventually maybe you're able to leave your job. And I just use the heavy equipment thing as a metaphor well, sure, tonight, for everything else. Well, yeah, I mean, tonight, for example, and we'll, we'll have him on the podcast. There's a, a friend of mine. He was original, one of my original guys that before I became famous, what I'm famous for, he was beyond that before that and he's a mechanic and he runs shops so he started a shop and then he started a youtube channel and now he has two or three other shops and then he mentored guys on how to build their own shops so now you might want to do a franchise right right that's where he's thinking now i have my own brand i'm going to franchise but he started as a mechanic you, you, you start turning gears exactly and way too many people think that some work is beneath them or they like me no work is beneath me i if i has to be done i do it right and a lot of young people oh no i just want to be the big boss, man. No, you got to turn. You got to turn a wrench. You got to clean it. If you own a business, you got to clean your own toilets, right? At least start. Hundred percent. You're gonna. You're gonna have to do things that you don't want to do. If you have a rental property and tenants leave it a mess, you're, you're gonna be in there right. helping out cleaning. Well, and ultimately, let, let you continue to use this analogy of the uh, heavy equipment guy, right? He's got to know how to service that piece of equipment, how to change the oil, how to put gas in it, how to operate it. And then after he masters all those skills to become this craftsman, if you will, of, of operating a bobcat or a heavy piece of equipment, then if he transitions into entrepreneurship, he's got to learn accounting, marketing, how do I source jobs, and ultimately, to be, all, a thousand things. That yeah, I never. And how wish do, that I had learned. right? And how do I successfully manage people? Cash flow. Yeah, I wish that skills you don't learn in college or anywhere. Even I never read a book just cash flow. Right. Cash flow is king. Right. Cash flow is everything. You learn that once you run your own business, but before you before you open your business, you don't really appreciate cash flow. Exactly. And, and how important is it? And you learn you learn all of that. And you have to learn all of it because if you don't learn it well enough, you'll get ripped off down the road anyway. Exactly. So even if you don't, you don't have to be your own webmaster, but if you know how to build a website, when somebody tells you a website's going to cost 20 grand, yeah, well, you're like, no, that's bullshit. Well, there's some real, but yeah, there's some real basic mistakes that I see entrepreneurs make. And I'm going to continue to use this analogy of the heavy equipment guy, but you know, he goes out He's like really excited. He just got an $8,000 job to level out, you know, an acre of dirt. Okay. So he loves the guy he's working for. He's like, oh, this guy's great, et cetera. So he decides, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, you know, start plowing that, that field. No contract. Right. Um, just a promise and a handshake. Right. He deploys his equipment. He deploys his time. He gets 25% of the way through it and finds out that maybe this guy isn't going to pay me. But now he's too deep into it. So these are basic entrepreneurial things that you don't learn a lot of times until you're in the business. But you've got to have a contract for service. You don't start service until you've got a contract More for people service. Slow pay. There, there's a thousand. Yeah, there's a thousand and one different ways that, that, that you learn. And right. I wish there, there, I wish more people talked about that, but it's, it's harder because that's not what young, you know, people don't want to hear that. Most people don't. Well, they don't. Most but they, people want to hear do this thing and make millions of dollars and not hear. Now nah, you're going right. to cheat it a couple times, a few times. You right. know, I've been stiffed on a lot of things. Yep. Or things people, don't happen the way you want them to happen. People overbill you, lawyers overbill you, you know, right. just things you're like, doesn't take that long. Shouldn't yep. take that long. Yeah, everywhere you look, which is why if maybe if you go to trade school, you get a good job. Not everybody needs or wants to be an entrepreneur too. That's exactly. I don't well, there's a whole other side yeah. where you can take those those well earned wages and those higher wages that those kind of jobs pay, and then parlay that into you know a side hustle. Maybe it's owning a rental property. You know. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. There's you, or you get a good job and you do a good job. And you go home and you go to the gym and you live a nice life and you keep costs low. Exactly. And you, and you, and you don't buy dumb things and you don't um, buy Rolexes and Ferraris and everything. You just live a nice life. I got a lot of friends in Missouri that live that life and are very happy. Yeah. But you're just content. You go home. You have a nice you know, house. A couple hundred thousand dollars. You have a nice house in a lot of the country. Right. You're not leveraged. Everything's chill. There, there's, a lot to, there's a lot to be said for that too. Yeah. 
well, it's why we see, um, you know, a migration to some degree out of, you know, California and out of some of these high tax and, you know, very expensive coastal cities uh, more inland into, you know, areas uh, in the Midwest and into Texas and areas like that is, you know, you can have a job making 75, 80,000 a year, maybe 90 with some overtime and live in a $150,000 house that's actually in a nice neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, and it had raised kids and you know everything's nice. If, as long as you don't get caught up in the, the rat race, caught up in the status games, caught exactly. up in the, the luxury goods luxury goods game. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting piece. So anyway, well that's that's an interesting segment of, about how, you know, mindfulness and, and kind of learning your craft and, and understanding where you're headed is really important and paying those dues up front. Right. Absolutely. 